Tash Dile and welcome to class 11 biology. Today we shall start the four, fourth chapter of the textbook that is Animal Kingdom. The topic we are going to discuss are the basis of classification and classification of animals. As you all know that Earth is rich in biodiversity. There are diversity of living organisms and it becomes very important to study each of them so that we can benefit and also we can live in harmony with the nature. The classification of organism is possible based on certain characteristics. Even though all the living organisms are diverse, there are certain characters which are common. So based on those characters, the organisms are classified. So first let us look at the basis of classification in animal kingdom. Basis of classification the first is level of organization, second body symmetry, third diploblastic and triploblastic organization, fourth coelom, fifth segmentation, sixth notochord. So based on these six criteria or the features, the, plant, uh, the animal kingdom is classified into various phylum. Okay, so let us lo uh, look at the first uh, basis of classification that is level of organization. So if you just take an example of higher organism or uh, organism like here it's deer, this organism the basic unit is cell. So this cell has its own structure and function. So this is at a cellular level. So if you talk a, of an example here you can see that uh, muscle of heart Okay, muscle of heart. So at this level, the work and the function of them is at the cellular level. Now, the, all the muscles of heart, when they work together uh, to perform a common function, then it becomes tissue. So at the tissue level, we have heart muscle tissue. Likewise, different tissues, different tissues, when they work together in coordination, they become organ and then at this, we call it as organ level. And then again here, number of organs, like here in this case, it is heart and then the blood vessels. Okay, different types of blood vessels all together will form a circulatory system here. So it here at this level, it is organ system level. And number of organ system work together in an organism. So these are the different levels of cellular organization. So at the lowest, we have cellular level and then tissue level, organ level, organ system level and then organism okay so there are different levels of organization so in animal kingdom uh, different organism uh, okay uh, will have a different uh, level of uh, cellular organization okay for example like uh, at the uh, uh, for example like in the case of porifera it is multicellular organism it has number of cells but they, uh, they are at the cellular level okay so likewise all other phylum will have different level of organization that we shall study in detail when we talk about each individual phylum. Next, symmetry, that is body symmetry. So uh, here we are going to look at whether the body can be divided into typical parts or not. So the first one is that of, uh, uh, here you can see is that of sponges. So in the case of sponges, you cannot divide the body into two equal halves. So they are asymmetry. Then we have other type that is symmetry. Again here in the symmetry again, whether uh, this organism can be divided into two equal half in one plane or more than one plane. So here example we gave is uh, that of cylindrata, organism from cylindrata. Here you can see that this organism can be divided into two equal halves from more than one angle here, more, more than one plane. This is one plane and another plane. So more than one plane, if you are able to divide into two equal half, such a symmetry is called as radial symmetry. Now here, the second type of symmetry is bilateral symmetry. So you can take example of human or you can say cockroach. So these organisms can be divided into two equal half, okay, only through uh, one plane. Okay, only through one plane, that is 
we call that bilateral symmetry. So whether the organism are symmetric or not, and if it is symmetric, they are a radial symmetry or bilateral symmetry. So based on that, animal is classified. Animal, all the animals are classified. So next is, okay, diploplastic and diploplastic organization, especially during the, okay, uh, embryonic stage. So in the embryonic stage, there are germinal layers. So this germinal layer, okay, it can, uh, an organism can have only two germinal layer that is ectoderm in the outer and endoderm towards the inner one and this is body cavity so there are only two layers you can see two layers of germinal layer that is outer ectoderm and inner meso uh, sorry inner endoderm so these two layer okay in between them there is a mesoglea this is an undifferentiated tissue so there are only two germinal layer that is okay organism having such a Germinal layer, only two germinal layer, we call them as diploplastic, diploplastic. Now, in higher organism, this there are three germinal layer, that is ectoderm, endoderm, and in between them, there is a mesoderm. So, there are three germinal layer, so these are triploplastic. Okay, so this again form an important basis of classification in animal kingdom. Next, silon. So siloms are nothing but these are the cavity, okay, between the endoderm and ectoderm, between endoderm and ectoderm. So this is a picture, okay, uh, sectional view of silomate. So these are usually uh, seen during the embryonic stage. So during the embryonic stage, okay, during the embryonic development, so this embryo, as you know, it is made up of number of cells and these cells differentiate into, okay, outer ectoderm, inner endoderm and middle mesoderm. And if there is a space between in the mesoderm, that is between outer ectoderm and inner endoderm, that space is called as silome. If the space is absent, we call it as acylomate. The organisms are called as acylomate. Here you can see that there is uh, outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm, and inner endoderm, but in between them you don't find any space. So such an organism, okay, having such a uh, uh, type of uh, germinal layer having no sil no silom in them, they are called as a silomate. Now, other one is silomate. So there is a space between outer ectoderm and inner endoderm. So this space here is called as silom. And if you look here, you can see that this pink color layer, okay, it represents mesoderm. That is the middle layer during the germinal okay, that is germinal layer in the embryo. So this mesoderm splits and it forms a cavity and that cavity is called as silome. And organisms having such a silome are called as silomate. Okay, now you have in between type where again we have ectoderm and endoderm but the mesoderm. Okay, mesoderm is not split but you can find a space here, okay, which is not a continuous one that we call it as pseudosilome an organism is called as having such pseudosilome is called as pseudosilomate so based on the silome whether uh, okay they have silome or not even if it is silome again if it is true or uh, pseudo pseudo is a false so based on that again uh, animal are classified next is segmentation so in this case, the, okay, so example here given is that of earthworm. You can see a segmented body here. Okay, so again, based on whether the body is segmented or not, we can classify the organism further. Next, notochord. Notochord is nothing but it's a rod-shaped structure. Okay, especially found during the embryonic stage here at the dorsal part of the body. So, be, be, okay, so again here, Based on whether the organism has notochord or not, you can classify the animals into groups like, okay, uh, the organism or the animals having notochords are called, okay, are categorized under uh, chordata and then those without notochord are categorized under non-chordata. Okay, so these are, are the basis of classification in animal kingdom. So let us now look at the classification of animal kingdom. Okay, so animals in animal kingdom. So as discussed here, these are the uh, criteria or the basis of classification here. Okay, so on the basis of this, some of these uh, 
uh, features, we classify the organism into groups. Okay, so animal kingdom. Usually, this animalia, the kingdom animalia, contains all the multicellular organism which are eukaryotic, and this group of organism cannot synthesize their own food. They are heterotrophs. Okay, now let us look at the classification. So let us here say here. So on the basis of the level of organization, the animals are classified into two groups, one having cellular level of organization, other having tissue organ or organ system level of organization. So the one in a, under the uh, cellular level of organization, okay, if the uh, level of organization is at cellular level, they are placed under phylum Porifera. Okay, so this Porifera is the first phylum here under plant kingdom. Now again here, even if okay the level of organization is tissue, organ or organ system, again they are further classified based on the body symmetry. So the body symmetry, it is either radial or it is bilateral. If it is radial, if it is radial, so again they are further classified, okay, and then it can be tinophora, sorry, it can be cylindrata or nidaria, nidaria, or it can be tinophora. Next, if they are bilateral, if they are bilateral, again they are classified based on coelom or body cavity. So without body cavity, a coelomate are all placed under phylum platyhelminthes. The flat worms, platyhelminthes, and the one with the false silom or pseudocilom or pseudocilomates. Pseudocilomates are placed under phylum Ascomindis. Next, with the true silom or the silomate, the one with the uh, uh, body cavity uh, by splitting of mesoderm, those organisms are placed under phylum. It can be Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermida. Hemicoteta and Corteta. Okay, so this is the broad classification of animals uh, based on common fundamental features. So here you have seen uh, how uh, the criteria or the features are used to classify the animals. And you can clearly see that those animals, even though they are diverse, still they are categorized into group. They are classified based on some common features, okay, common features, okay, like level of organization or body symmetry or body cavity. Now, if you look here, you can find phylum like Porifera, Cylindrata, Tinophora, Platyhelminthes, Ascalminthes, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemicordata and Cordata. So all these phylum we are going to study in detail one by one. Now the first one is phylum Porifera. So this group of organism, again here, of course, they are multicellular and the level of organization is cellular level of organization and the body has number of pores called as ostia and so the name Porifera. Okay, and this group are commonly known as sponges. And if you talk about the habitat, they are marine and the body is asymmetrical. You cannot divide them into two equal half. And uh, they are multicellular and the level of organization is cellular level of organization. Even though there is, uh, okay, there is a division of labor. And the most distinct thing you can find here is there is a water transport or canal system for food gathering respiratory exchange that is exchange of gas and removal of waste so here you can see this is a part of a porifera here okay sponges there are number of cells and they are aggregates of cells okay and in between you can find number of pores here so called as pore bearing or porifera and this has a water canal system where the water enters into the body through the ostia the water enters into the body through the ostia and they have a body cavity called as spongocil. This body cavity called as spongocil and this spongocil is lined by a cell 
called as conocyte or you can say collar cells and then there is an opening called as osculum. So when the water enters the body, it enters through the ostea, moves into the sponger cell and this water will carry food or nutrients or the respiratory gas exchange like okay, more of a, uh, oxygen and then it moves out, okay, it moves out in, uh, okay, through the osculum. They move out through the osculum. So you can see the direction of or you can see pathway the of the water for in the water canal system here through ostea to sponger cell to the osculum and outside. Okay, so this water canal system helps them in <coughs> gathering of the food, respiratory exchange and removal of waste. Okay, and then this is one uh, enlarged structure of conocyte here. Conocyte, you can see color, color cell and the food particle being trapped here. And there is a phagocytosis of food here. Okay, and this body, the sponge body is supported or you can say they have a skeletal structure made up of spicules here. Okay, so and the digestion is intracellular as you can see here digestion the food is taken directly into the cells the digestion is intracellular and body is supported by skeleton made up of spicules or sponge and fiber as we have shown uh, the picture uh, it is shown in the picture and the organism is hermaphrodite they bear both male and female gamete and the mode of reproduction the mode of reproduction okay they uh, occur by asexual means as well as sexual means. Asexual reproduction takes place by fragmentation and sexual reproduction takes place by formation of gamete. Now here uh, we said that uh, the uh, organism here is hermaphrodite but the fertilization is cross fertilization. So here the male will release the sponge. Okay, the male will release the sperm here into the surrounding which in turn will carry towards another organism and it enters into the sponge okay into the sponge and this fertilizes the egg cell and form zygote zygote develop into larva and larva okay comes out okay they are, uh, they are free swimming here and then later develops into an adult sponge here so here the uh, sexual reproduction takes place by formation of gamete and these gametes, even though they can be produced by a single individual or the same individual, but the fertilization is cross fertilization and it occurs inside the body. That is internal fertilization takes place, but during the developmental stage, they have a free larval stage here. So the development is indirect. Okay, so fertilization is internal and development is indirect having a larval stage. Okay, now let us look at the second phy uh, phylum in the animal kingdom that is cylindrata. So cylindrata includes that of hydra, atensia, jellyfish and uh, 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 various corals. So talking about their habitat, they are usually aquatic and that to a marine. It can be sessile or you can say sedentary or it can be free swimming. And talking about its uh, body, it, they are radially symmetrical. So as this is radially symmetrical, the body can be divided into equal half from any number of plane here. They are radially symmetrical and the level of organization is tissue and they are diploblastic having ectoderm and endoderm. They have tentacles here. They have tentacles here. These tentacles helps in capturing of the prey and it also helps in... Uh, uh, defense and offense and these tentacles this so you can see so many hair like structure here and these contain a special cell called as nidoblast yeah. or you can say nidocyte and they are used for anchorage defense and for capture of prey now talking about its body here they have a central vascular cavity having a single uh, opening that is mouth and digestion is intracellular as well as extracellular here. So they have a central cavity here. 
So it collects the uh, water containing food, enters into here, and then again they have a single opening out. Okay, or a single opening that is for entry and exit. There is only a single opening. Okay, and digestion can be intracellular as well as extracellular. That is inside the cell as well as outside the cell. And this is a picture of a neuroblast. Okay, and these uh, organism they can have two body forms. Okay, so this is polyp form and this is medusa here. And polyp form, they are cylindrical structure here. And the mouth is towards the upper end here. And they are usually sessile, they are sedentary, they are attached to the substratum. But in the case of medusa, they are umbrella shape. They are umbrella shape and they are free swimming. They are free swimming and the mouth or the opening is towards the ventral side. And some of these organisms have a skeleton. And this skeleton is composed of calcium carbonate here and they form a coral. So there are uh, different corals, are brain coral, sea fan and fungoid here. So these are the different corals and they have a skeleton made up, made up of calcium carbonate. Again here, these are the two body forms here, uh, medusa and polyp. Medusa, okay, free swimming, polyp, sedentary, and here mouth is towards the ventral side, that is downward, and mouth is upward here. Okay, so medusa is only okay, fine, and this organism, okay, this uh, cylindrata can be in medusa as well as in the form of polyp, but there are certain group of cylindrates where during its life cycle it will have both polyform and meduciform and they alternate each other and we call it as metagenesis so let us look at the metagenesis in an organism here obelia so in this obelia the body part here you can see is in polyp form okay that is fully developed polyp and this polyp produce medusa asexually and this medusa produce gamete. So here female medusa producing egg and male medusa producing sperm. And they fertilize. So fertilization takes place here leading to formation of zygote. Zygote become embryo. Embryo here it is two cell, four cell and many cell. And later on this embryo will develop into free swimming planula larva. So here you can see that the development is indirect because there is a larval stage. And this later on will settle and develop into young and then into a okay fully developed adult polyp so here in this case you can see polyp form medusa form polyp form so here in this life cycle okay polyp and medusa both alternate and that is called as metagenesis okay so they exit in both the forms which alternate there's alternation of generation Polyp produce medusa asexually and medusa form polyp sexually. Okay, that is called as metagenesis. Now next is tenophora. The third phylum is tenophora. So these are commonly known as sea walnut or comb jellies. And they are exclusively marine. They are marine, that is in salt water. Body is radially symmetrical. The body has diploplastic organism, that is it has only... Uh, ectoderm and endoderm with a tissue level of organization with a tissue level of organization and this body bears uh, eight external row of ciliated comb ciliated comb which helps in locomotion so it has a ciliated comb here like this so there are eight rows of ciliated comb which helps in locomotion and the digestion is intracellular as well as extracellular that is inside the cell as well as outside the cell and one of the important property you find in this phylum is bioluminescence they are able to emit light and sex are not separate that is they are homophrodite reproduction takes place only by sexual means and fertilization is external okay that is fertilization takes place in the surrounding here in the case of or uh, this group it is a marine water okay and development is indirect. Indirect development means there is a larval stage. Next, phylum Platyhelminthes. 
This platyhelm means this, the body is torso ventrally flattened. And that is why they are called as, also called as flatworms. Some of the flatworms are planaria, liver flip, and earthworm. These are, most of them are endoparasites in animals and human body. The body is bilaterally symmetrical. Okay, so here bilaterally symmetrical, you can divide into two equal half only through a single plane, a, sing, a single plane, yes. Okay, and they are triploplastic. So as discussed, triploplastic means having ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. And they are acylomate, acylomate. They do not have silom. They do not have body cavity between ectoderm and endoderm. And the level of organization is organ. They have an organ level of organization. So since they are, most of them are endoparasite, they have a features which helps them to um, and they have a features which helps them to, uh, to attach to the paras, uh, uh, host. Okay, and they also have the ability to absorb the nutrient from the host directly from the body surface. So they have a structure, they also have a structure to attach to the uh, uh, host, like suckers, okay, and hooks. And these organisms usually are hermaphrodite, and the type of fertilization is internal. Even though they are hermaphrodite, they undergo cross-fertilization. And fertilization is internal, that is, it takes place inside the female body. And development is through many larval stages, that is, they, are, they have an indirect development. And planaria especially, they have a high capacity of regeneration. So if you cut a planaria into three pieces, each one will grow into an individual organism. Okay, so here you can see hooks and circle present on parasitic plant, uh, okay, parasitic forms. Okay, so here this example of tenosolium, that is tapeworm, okay, which are usually you can find uh, in the human body as an endoparasite. They have a hooks and they have the circle so that they can click on to the host and then suck the blood and, and derive all the nutrition. And this is another example of the parasite. Now, as for, as for the the uh, osmoregulation and excretion, they have a special cell called as flame cells. So flame cells, these are present in the, okay, platyhelminthes. And this particular cell have a cilia beating like that of a flame, so named as flame cell. So these are throughout the body here. It is shown here. You can see there, uh, there are a number of flame cells here. Okay, and then this tubule leading to nephridio pore, pore. This will lead to the external body surface. Okay, so what happens here is beating of the cilia cause interstitial fluid to be filtered through the slit-like opening of the flame cell. So in the body, there are interstitial fluid and this interstitial fluid contain water and other nutrients or the waste. So they are... Okay, uh, they are, uh, what is that? They, they pass through the slit-like opening into the flame cell because of the beating of the cilia. So as the fluid travels through the tubule, most of the solutes are reabsorbed and the excess water and the waste, they exit the body through the nephridio pore. So they enters into this flame cell through this way, comes out as a tubule and this tubule through the, uh, tubule into the tubule and tubule will let into, lead into the Nephridio pore. Nephridio pore is present all over the body surface. Okay, so uh, uh, the, uh, this is about uh, platyhelminthes. Now next is phylum Ascalminthes, and this body is circular in cross section. So if you take a cross section of them, the body is circular, so also called as uh, round worm. And this can be free living or it can be parasite in plants or animals. They can be aquatic or they can be terrestrial. The body are bilaterally symmetrical, bilaterally symmetrical, triploplastic and pseudosilomate. So you have to focus here. Ascalmindis have a pseudosilome, pseudosilomate. And the level of organization is organ system. The elementary canal is complete. The elementary canal is complete with well-developed pharynx. So elementary canal is complete means they have a separate opening for 
okay the entry and exit so mouth and the anus so they have a separate uh, opening so we call it as complete an excretory tube removes the body waste from the body cavity through excretory pore so they are excretory pores through which the body waste are removed and then uh, the sexes are separate okay male and female are separate and they are usually distinct female are longer than male uh, fertilization is internal and development can be direct that is the young one will resemble the adult or it can be indirect having a larval stage okay so that's all for the session uh, we will uh, talk about the remaining phylum in the next session thank you